1974, Wyanette, Illinois. A 14-year-old girl left her friend's house on her bicycle. On her ride home, she was spotted and offered a ride from her friend's father. She took the ride, and that was the last night she spent alive. This is the story of Tracy Sapp. Good evening. Welcome to Kelly's Coffee and Crime Chat. This is Kelly. And it is actually 7 o'clock p.m. I am coming to you late tonight. Uh, My dad has been in the hospital this week. um, And they're looking at um, a biopsy because it's possible that he has lung cancer. So I've gotten this one up late for my early, a little bit late, I wanted to get it up for early access before it goes up on Friday. Um, It is Wednesday evening, so I made it. And I'm hoping I can get through this okay without getting interrupted. Because I'm at a different time. And this is the time that my cats like to cuddle. So, I am not drinking Java Mama. But I did drink the Bayonet today. This morning, it was so good. Um, But I'm drinking wine. Yes, I love barefoot wine. If you have not tried barefoot wine... Very good, always good. It's a sweet wine and always cheaper on, you know, as far as cost. I just love it. I'm having the watermelon. That's what I'm drinking. <laughs> so, but but uh, speaking of Java Mama, we have all new Cocos that just arrived in, on the site yesterday. And um, they all sound wonderful. There's like a chai latte as well. And there's a red velvet cocoa. There's all kinds of new cocos. And I do have our Easter and um, Shamrock, or not, uh, St. Patty's coffees on the way to me. So um, I ordered, had to make sure to order those. Okay, here we go. I am bringing this to you. I was so hoping to find more on this case. And I've not been able to find not even images except for the gravestone on find a grave. Uh, That's the only place I could find any photos of Tracy Sapp or her murderers, murderers, plural. That's right. So um, I really wanted to um, learn more about this. If anybody knows or anybody happens to just be listening from Princeton, Illinois, or uh, Wyanette area right there in Princeton. I'm pretty sure that's right there in Princeton um, to let me know because I would love to do more on this case, more information um, because I just looked up on casetext.com, which was the court report of it and newspapers.com. I got some information on there besides find a grave. Um, So I did a case way, way back. You probably have to go back. I was going to look at the number and I forgot, but I'm pretty sure it's in the top 10. And it is the first 10. I mean, not top 10, but the first 10 episodes I did. And it was of Christy Doyle in the early 90s. And she was also from this area and was murdered. These are not connected. But when I I ran onto this one back when I was doing hers and I had waited on it because I was trying to find more information on it and I, I never did. But go back and listen to Christy Doyle. The reason why, and you don't have to listen to it to hear this, but it is a very good case. I remember when that happened and it was forgotten. So I had to really use my memory to remember this girl's name and I had to keep doing the right Google search because I knew I didn't have any other names. I knew her first name and I knew that the person that killed her, there was something about him I knew from the story. It was a big story at the time. And I typed that in and I was finally, I kept putting Princeville, Illinois instead of Princeton. And that was my mistake. Then I found it. So this is the story of Tracy Lynn Sapp. She was 14 years old. She was born October 27th of 1959. So this was a Saturday night. She was 14 years old. It was April 7th of 1974. Now she had a friend named Jim Callanan. That's C-A-L-L-I-N-A-N. 
and it said friend so I'm thinking I don't know if it's a boyfriend but she knew him so she spent quite a you know um she spent time or at the family's residence a lot um now I'm thinking they went to school together I did not get his age um Jim had a brother 15 year old Tim so there was Jim and Tim well Tim Timothy from what it was uh, printed uh, in the file in the report um, he must not I don't know if he lived with his family or not because he arrived in Bureau County from what it said on this day on this night Bureau County is where their town is so it said that he arrived there on April 7th of 74 Saturday night so that's why I was thinking he lived somewhere else that maybe um the mom and his mom and dad were divorced and maybe he lived with his mom I'm guessing I never found out and I know that his father is married during this so maybe he was married to a second wife I'm speculating I didn't get any of that but that's just what I'm thinking but he came home he did not know Tracy Sapp so he met her that night when he got home and um he met her he got to his father's house on the fifth and it said he met tracy the next day which was the sixth but now on the seventh now the sixth would have been a friday so she was had spent many many a lot of time over at their residence well she left their house on her bicycle at night it was that evening i don't know if it was dark it could have been well it's in april it does get It does still uh, stay daylight out a little longer. Of course, um, daylight savings time would have been by. So uh, she left on her bicycle. And William is their 15-year-old father, William Callanan. He took Tim and they left in their station wagon. I don't know where they were going at this time. He saw Tracy on her bike and it was cold. So they stopped and offered her a ride to drive her home well she she of course said yes you know she knew him and they put her bike in the back of the car station wagon remember those days of riding around a station wagon put her bike in the back of the car she got in the front seat between both of them now a station wagon is pretty big so it's like a big bench seat back then you didn't wear seat belts and a lot of cars didn't even have seat belts so they stopped at a gas station and William asked Tracy if she wanted to see a farmhouse he was thinking of buying. Now, why is he asking this young girl, 14 year old girl, if she wanted to see an ab- a farmhouse? It was empty. It was abandoned. That's a red flag right there. Um, that's just the strangest thing when I read that. She said, OK, but he told her not to tell his wife it was supposed to be a surprise. Tim then saw his dad while he was driving reach over and start fondling tracy's breasts boobs breasts and tracy did not object but she was a shy girl more quiet she was reserved um she didn't do anything while he was doing this but she took her coat off and then her shirt now this is according to tim's testimony at trial the son she removed her coat and then her shirt I don't know if he told her to and that was left out but when William then reached over the dashboard and got a knife he cut Tracy's bra off in the middle of the bra Tracy then pulled back but William kept fondling her he was driving with one hand at 20 miles an hour and um, William said something something to her and unbuttoned her jeans then he reached over and unzipped them she unbuttoned her jeans sorry he said something to her i don't know what it was she unbuttoned her jeans and then he reached over and unzipped them all the way she told him no but then he started ripping her underwear off and he did rip her underwear off um i can't imagine doing i mean first of all you're driving how are you doing all this unless you're i I mean i know you must have been looking at the road I, i don't know they got to the farmhouse William told Tim to get out do not come back until I honk the horn that's what he told him so here it is cold out Tim left but he came back in a few, a few minutes later because it's so cold out I don't know why if, if maybe he didn't have a jacket I don't know he saw Tracy now she was naked 
and giving his dad oral sex. Um, Tim got into the back seat and his dad told him, do not get out. Wait until I honk the horn. So he had to get out again. When he heard the horn honk, he came back to the car. He got in and he saw Tracy lying in the back seat. He asked his dad what was wrong with her. William said, quote, I knocked her off. All Tim said back was sure. Now, I don't know if that's like sure. Like, yeah, right. I don't know if that's what he meant. I'm thinking that's what he meant. But um, he asked his dad again once they were back on the road and he repeated that he knocked that he repeated the same thing. I knocked her off. He said sure again back to him. Then they heard Tracy moan. William pulled into another farmhouse, abandoned farmhouse, pulled Tracy into the front seat. She said, quote, if you kill me, leave my bike where somebody can find it. So she wanted somebody to find her bicycle. So, you know, um, they would know, you know. William put her in a stranglehold. It was called a Japanese stranglehold is how it was worded. Um, he says that this would kill someone in an instant. That's what he told Tim. Then he grabbed the knife and hit her on the forehead with the handle of it. And he tried to put the stranglehold on her again. But he, then when he checked her pulse, she still, still had a pulse. He took some rope from under the seat. He just had, you know, just had to have some rope under the seat. I mean, come on, you know. Took the rope out, put it around her neck and pulled it. Checked her pulse. He said, quote, not dead. Started pulling the rope again. And then he said, quote, come on, die, bitch. I'm just reading this like I like I do every time. And I am like, how in the world can you say this about a 14 year old girl? Not only having sex with her or and whatever else you're doing. I don't know. This whole thing just sickens me. Then Tim grabbed the other end of the rope and pulled it, helping his dad kill Tracy. It took four minutes until she passed. They disposed of her body over a bridge. They threw out the rope out of the car, but then they never found it. Even when Tim told them where it was, they never found the rope. They threw her bike out on another bridge and her clothes over into the water. Tim asked his father why he killed Tracy. He said he should have turned him. He said she would have turned him in for having sex with her. Then why are you having sex with a 14 year old? Sorry. I always got to throw in my, uh, just, it just angers me. He told his son to tell police they were chasing hippies on motorcycles to get their license numbers. And that they had car trouble. Now he said to his own son, he said, now you have your first girl and that, and that he cannot tell anyone. William said he had been told that hippies were after him because they turned, he turned in one of their brothers for being AWOL from the service. And Tim said this as well, but got immunity to tell the truth, which he ended up doing. Um, he got immunity to tell the truth. And on the stand, William came in and said that Tim was lying. So he committed perjury. All I found out was that William was convicted of murder. I never found out what he got. I have been trying to find out. I cannot find out what this guy got. I cannot find out a photo of him, and I'm sure he's deceased by now because he'd be over 100 years old. I cannot find, find out anything about his death. Every time I try to look up a William Callanan, somebody else comes up and it's not him. <clears throat> I thought I had found him, but it, I, it wasn't him because the year was all wrong. And I don't understand why I cannot find anything out about this case. Um, as far as like images, I mean, this is all I could find. And to me, this is a big deal. It is a really big deal. So if anybody out there knows more about the case of Tracy Sapp, please, please let me know. Cause I would love to talk more about this and about the type of person she was, because this is just going by uh, Tim's, 
testimony. And I would like to know more about her. Um, I tried to dip, dig up an obituary. I couldn't find one. <clears throat> so that's the story of Tracy Sapp from what I got. Um, like I said, go back and listen to um, Christy Doyle because that is a good one. Like I said, I ran onto this as I was looking at this and I'm going to go dig up some more information and see if I can find it. And I might leave <clears throat> if I do. I'll add a, a small like recording at the end of this or something that maybe will help or I can put it on Instagram and Facebook and Patreon for the early access on this. So thank you everybody for your support and I am still trying to work through the shows on Hulu like Fargo and I started watching this thing on Max called they call him mostly harmless that's the name of it but I didn't get through it because I wasn't getting what was going on it just like wasn't really talking much about the guy as being harmless and I wasn't getting it but then I saw a preview for it and it talked about how bad he was so now I got to go back and finish it and that's on Max so I need to go back and finish that. And then I started watching the real story of, you know, the guy that drank the, made people drink the Kool-Aid. I can't think of his name. Oh, that makes me so mad. But there's a documentary on Max talking to his, a woman that had married him and her daughter and how he ended up pitting them against each other. And it was the grandmother, the daughter and her daughter. And it, they're all there talking about him. And the, the youngest one, that's the granddaughter. She wants to find more out about her grandfather, even though um, she doesn't know much about him, <clears throat> but wants to find out more about his life, basically. And I started that, but of course I didn't finish it because I just ended up getting into something else. That's I do that a lot. <laughs> so everybody have a wonderful Wednesday and I'm hoping to keep up on these. And I'm really hoping that my dad... Um, does well on his oh my gosh he's having this lung biopsy and I know there's gonna, there could be complications and that's what we're all worried about um, so just hoping everything comes out and I will fill everybody in next week on my episode um, and if you have any suggestions please please let me know because I'm always looking for suggestions I'm sorry this was a short one like I said I've been so busy but I wanted to get this told and I'm just hoping that if somebody out there has any more information to let me know because this is one messed up crime I mean it just is to me it, it I don't understand what was going through this guy's head you know you know somebody you take a ride from them but you know what? Now it's like read, reading about all the crimes I've read about. Don't ever trust anybody. Oh man, nobody. Um, so that is all for today. And I'm going to have another probably toward the end of February for the next, for the last Patreon monthly bonus episode. But I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. So, like I said, any suggestions, just, um, you know how to get a hold of me, right? Email, Instagram, Facebook, and I will certainly consider some suggestions. So that's all for tonight. Thank you, everybody, for listening. All your support, all your reviews, reviews and rating the show on Spotify is wonderful. And I'm going to get off of here and relax for the rest of the night. And I will see you next time.